Oh, okay, uh, okay, audience. Today we will discuss about uh, IFRS 9, that is uh, financial instrument. And this is the first lecture and SBR. So today we will discuss about IFRS 9 and some uh, IS 32. So let's start. What is financial instrument? What is financial instrument? Financial instrument is basically a contract uh, that give rise to financial liability and our equity instrument for one entity and financial asset for another entity okay if you see here is a two entity uh, these two entity have a contract you know they have contract and this contract give rise financial asset to one entity and financial liability or equity instrument to another entity and this is called financial instrument so means financial instrument is a contract that uh, because of that contract one party uh, have financial asset and the other party or the other entity have financial liability or equity instrument okay so let's start with example first example we have here is uh, let's say uh, uh, you you sold something on credit basis okay you have sale of goods on credit so for you you will have to receive the money and the future and that will create receivable okay and the person who purchased the things purchase the goods from you will create they, they have to pay you and the future so they have to create fable okay so this receivable is financial asset and this payable is called financial liability and this is a contract I mean you when you <coughs> when you create invoice so <coughs> this invoice will give rise to two things one is financial asset and another one is financial liability <coughs> now uh, let's talk about the equity instrument <coughs> let's say when an entity <coughs> raises finance I mean they want money and they issue equity instrument okay so the entity that subscribe to the share mean uh, the entity who pay or who invest and the equity instrument issued by the party so the person or uh, so the entity uh, who issue the equity share uh, so that that is equity instrument for that entity while the another entity uh, who pay mean who pay money so if make some investment and that equity share so it will create financial asset for that entity. let's say this is we have two entity a and b okay this a party want money they want to raise finances and so they issue equity shares okay now the party b okay this is a second entity and they have invest in these equity instrument equity issue uh, these equity shares so mean they pay some money okay so for party a this is equity instrument okay and for party b this is financial asset because they also investment so this is another example <clears throat> Now let's move on. We have the, the third example. I uh, hope you have clear now. Uh, let's say the, uh, um, the entity want to raise finance, okay, and they issue bond instead of equity instrument. Clear? Maybe venture. So the entity that subscribe to the bonds means uh, mean the lender, the person who pay the money for this, this, these, these bonds. So mean lend the money has a financial asset so that they have financial asset I mean they have, they have investment uh, 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 for these bonds and the issuer of the bond the party who issued the bond uh, actually the borrower they, they they need money they want to raise finance so they will create financial liability so here if i say like this a and b this party want to issue bond and why they want to issue bond 
because they want to raise finance so mean this party is a borrower equity okay and this party b has invested and in this the investment and the party a bonds so that will create financial asset and here this party is lender i mean they provide money so this party will have financial liability and this party will have financial asset and this is the whole thing is called financial uh, financial instrument okay now if you see here we have a diagram you see here this is a just a you know a shortcut or summarized form so here we have a contract and this contract give rise to financial asset to one entity and financial liability to another entity and this whole thing is called financial instrument financial instrument clear now if you see here this is the receivable person the person the entity company a let's say sell something on credit basis so they will create a receivable and receivable is a financial s and this the another party who let's say the company b uh, purchase these uh, um, goods on credit basis so they will create like payable and payable is liabilities the financial liability okay and this is a financial asset same as the case here uh, if the party a uh, issue some share equity is share so uh, one party mean the uh, investment and company b share as financial let's say this company issues the company b issues some share and this company A have invested in this company B share. So this investment is financial asset. Okay. Now the another party, uh, the company B, who issue the share, he should issue the share. So that will be the equity instrument. So mean this here create we have some financial asset and equity instrument. Okay. And this is car financial instrument. Now another example here. Let's say investment in company B did mean this company B has issued some bond, okay? And this company A have invested and they invest they have some investment in these uh, debt uh, instrument or these uh, these bond. So this party company A will create this will create financial as this contract will create financial asset for company uh, A while liability financial liability for company B because. They, the, the company uh, B actually want to raise finance by issuing a bond and this party A have invested uh, they have investment and the company B uh, bond so it will create financial asset okay let's move on now we have three things which arising from this definition the first thing is financial asset like uh, receivable okay the second thing is financial liability like uh, fable we have already studied in the example and the th third form is the equity which is the sheer issue by the entity okay now let's move on what is financial asset what is financial asset so financial asset is any asset that is cash that is any equity instrument of another entity there is a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity okay or a contractual right to exchange financial asset or financial liability with another entity under condition that are favorable potentially favorable to the entity mean the uh, the, uh, the entity who exchange the uh, asset, uh, financial asset or financial liability, and they have right of you know uh, uh, you know they have right uh, of some uh, you can say under the condition and, and such a condition in which uh, they have some uh, uh, they 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 financially favorable to the entity mean that if they have contractual right to exchange the financial asset so mean they ex they exchange financial asset and financial liability with another entity 
while uh, while uh, the exchange is an under condition which is uh, potentially favorable to the entity okay and the last thing is a non derivative contract uh, for which the entity is or may be obliged to receive a variable number mean variable number of entity on equity as not a fixed number in let's say this here is a value 10 so for this value the variable number of share will be like this let's the entity share uh, value is uh, ten dollar so definitely they will uh, um, receive uh, ten shares okay now if the share uh, let's say the share value is five dollar so uh, definitely they will get 20 shares own shares so this is variable number I mean the value of share change because of the price of the share now what we have learned from this definition the first thing the first thing we have um, that cash that in s that is cash means what is cash cash is any free cash bank account or other cash cable this financial asset and uh, an equity instrument of another entity what does it mean it means that if you buy shares of apple company okay on a stock exchange mean you have purchased some uh, some shares of apple company or co company whatever it is then the apple company shares are a financial asset for you okay so mean you have you have some investment so this is financial asset for you but this is the equity instrument of apple company I mean this is the share of apple company this is the equity instrument of apple company an example we have studied um, at the time of the at the time of financial um, instrument when we we just when we were discussing about uh, um, financial ins uh, instrument definition that uh, let's say of one party this is party a and this is party b and this party issue some equity share okay let's say this uh, is apple company and you have invested in this company so for you this is financial asset but for this company this is a equity instrument because this is the equity of company a let's say this company a is apple company okay so this is the equity instrument of another entity mean if you have invested in some uh, shares of the company so this that will be uh, a financial asset for you but for that company that is the equity share so it means their equity instrument of another entity clear now let's move on what what a contractual right so a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity means you have to receive uh, cash or another financial asset like uh, you know trade receivable trade receivable <coughs> is financial asset issue loan and what does issue loan means mean a debt issue okay essentially a promissory note and which the issuer is the buyer means the person who issued the bond actually want to raise finance mean uh, they are a borrower they want money and the entity buying the debt asset is the lender and the person who buy the debt the entity who buy the debt is the lender because they lend money so in exchange for the loan, the issuer or the borrower must make payment to the investor, mean the lender, in the form of interest payments. Okay, so this is a contractual right. So if there is issue loan, there is a trade receivable, there is a purchase bond, these will be the financial asset. Clear? Now, uh, <coughs> a contractual right exchange financial asset or financial liability with another entity under condition that are for what does it mean it means that let's say if you purchase a call option if you purchase a put option so here you will have an option you will have right and that uh, um, right is that when you exchange financial asset a financial liability with another entity so the condition will be on your side I mean it will be it will give some power to you okay <clears throat> like purchase option and what is what is call option so if you purchase a call option what is call option so call option is basically gives the buyer I mean you have purchased some 
uh, you purchase uh, call option so this call option will give right to you but not obligation means you will get a right but not obligatory for you to buy so when you purchase call option then you have the right to buy the thing but it's not obligatory for you to it's not mandatory for you to buy the thing the underlining security mean you uh, you have call option okay you purchase a call option so you have the right but not obligation to purchase the underlining security okay at exercise price it or within a specified time okay the second thing is put option means let's say uh, in the market if you have call option and you have um, purchase uh, um, you know you have uh, you purchase a call option and the call option is that you have to buy the uh, share let's uh, let's say at five dollar okay you have to buy the share this is the share and this is the price of share you have uh, at a time of call so when you you want to uh, purchase buy the share at the exercise price within specified time then you, you will pay this five dollar but when the at the time of exercise price the market price is let's say of the share is three dollar okay so definitely you will not purchase this share because the market value is less than that of the uh, call option so here you have right to buy the thing but not obligation so you will not go for this okay now another case if you have uh, if you purchase a call option uh, in a, let's say the security is five uh, this is the five dollar for share and in the market uh, the price is let's say seven dollar per share so here you have rights so you will write have you have right to buy the thing the shares and reliance security but uh, you don't have the obligation so now if you see here this is the the call option price that you have the right for uh, you get uh, you have uh, buy the thing and you have the rights to you the call option and now this you see this is the market price so definitely you will exercise and you will purchase the share at five dollar you will not go to the market and purchase the same at seven dollar so here is the thing if if the condition is uh, the, so here if you see the condition is in uh, uh, potentially unfavorable so uh, as favorable for you if you see here if you purchase this thing uh, at seven dollar at the market so you will lose definitely two dollar okay and if you purchase this app um, using this a uh, call option uh, so you will uh, just you mean uh, getting uh, you will gain uh, two dollar okay so here you have a condition which is favorable to you I mean you have the right to purchase the thing when that's uh, on your side app is not on your side then you should not go for purchase now the second thing is put up option if let's say if you purchase put up option then what that's the same thing like that but this here there we have to purchase and here we have to sell okay now you have uh, the right and not obligation to sell the underlying security at so you have a con you have a contract with someone let's say this uh, company a is you and this is the company b and this uh, you told this person this company b that you will sell some share uh, this is the put option okay and you will share the at five dollar okay at the uh, specified data side now at the market now at the market the price is let's move on to seven dollar so if you sell the same thing at five dollar the it will be unfavorable for you but here the market price is seven so definitely you will lose two dollar now here is the the, the thing that you have right mean you have right to sell the thing but it's not obligatory for you so it's not favorable for you to sell the thing so it's not obligate it's not obligation to sell the thing so you will not sell definitely you will not sell now if the thing is reversed let's say the price uh, the put option is seven dollar and the market price is five dollar okay <coughs> now here if you see this is your uh put option okay and this is the market trading rate okay so definitely you will go for exercise this put option because it will favor you by two dollars okay so this is the actual thing which in the um, uh, which we have here discussed that to exchange financial asset of financial liability another entity under condition that 
or potentially favorable so when the condition is favorable for you when the condition is favorable for you so when you purchase call option means to, to buy something in the PUG, PUG security and put option means to sell if it's favorable for you then sell if it's not favorable for you then don't sell so this is the option this is the right is a favorable to the entity and the last thing in this definition is a non-derivative contract which, which I have already discussed that what does variable number of entity on equation means. Now here is a summarized form that financial asset is uh, uh, you know a cash uh, equity instrument of another entity which I have discussed about the Apple company example share of a capital company a contractual right receive cash or financial asset we already discussed Asian financial um, financial instrument of another in under condition which is favorable for you and the contract contractual um, the contract settle an entity own equity instrument which i have uh, discussed already as a variable number of entity own equity instrument. i hope this <coughs> is clear to you Clear to you now if you see here financial asset uh, financial liability what is financial liability financial liability is any liability <coughs> that is a contractual obligation if you see uh, that before we have studied that a contractual right a contractual right uh, regarding financial asset but here we have contractual obligation and contractual obligation for delivering cash or another financial instrument to another entity like trade payable so trade payable is a financial liability okay travel uh, 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 payable is a tri uh, financial liability okay and we have to pay the money to the entity so another uh, deliver cash or another financial asset to another entity. Uh, taken loans issue bonds is also sort of thing the second thing is a uh, uh, exchange of financial asset financial liability with another entity under condition that is not favorable for you so here uh, we have a written call option and this is the opposite of purchase call option and purchase put option and a non-derivative a non-derivative contract for which the entity is or may be obliged to deliver so here we have to deliver a variable number and there in the financial asset we have to receive okay this is the just a summary that uh, um, financial liability is a contractual obligation to deliver so the, here we have to just talk about deliver cash or financial asset exchange of financial uh, financial as financial instrument in an entity under condition that is not favorable to the entity and a contract settled with entity owners no non derivative contract and which you have to deliver a variable number of own equity instrument okay now the last Think uh, from the definition is equity instrument that what is equity instrument so equity instrument is a uh, unique contract that evidences a residual and trust and the asset of entity after deducting all its liability means that uh, after deducting liability from the entity asset you will have some residual interest and that is called equity if you see here we have a contract this is a contract okay and this asset this entity asset and after deducting the liability we will have this residual interest and this is called equity instrument an equity instrument is also called net asset okay now so <coughs> and financial instrument we have discussed that financial instrument is a contract that uh, give rise financial liability for an entity and for another entity uh, it might be a uh, financial liability or equity instrument we have already discussed that what is financial asset what is financial liability and what is equity instrument okay now here is a thing that interest dividend loss and gains okay the treatment of how we will treat these things let's say if you have paid some dividend okay you have paid some dividend and respect of preference share okay and this preference share is classified as liability then finance charge the, then the then the dividend uh, paid uh, will be charged as a finance expense to profit or loss okay so when you have to pay, when you paid some dividend and a dividend against uh, uh, preference share and this preference share is classified as liability 
then that will be charged as a finance cost to profit or loss. The second thing, if the dividend fair in respect of the preference shares and that is classified as equity, then you will report that to the statement of changes in equity. Okay, let me explain this thing. That how is classified as a dividend, uh, how is classified as a liability and how is classified as equity. If you see here, if an entity issue preference share, okay, now the entity issue preference shares. And for this preference share, they pay PEX rate of dividends, okay, means the entity paying some PEX rate of dividends, okay. And uh, they have a mandatory redemption, man, the redemption is compulsory at the end, at the future date. So the substance is there that the contractual obligation to deliver cash means you have contractual obligation to pay cash because this is mandatory redemption. Okay, so that should be recognized as liability. So such a preference share will be classified as liability. A preference share for which you have to pay tax rate of dividend and the redemption of the preference share is mandatory. Then that means that this is that that preference share should be classified as liability. And the dividend pay should be reported at profit or loss account. The second thing, when the preference share is classified as a equity, when you don't have to, uh, when you don't uh, have a tax maturity, mean you have not, there's a no mandatory redemption. So there, if there's a no mandatory and redemption. So where the issuer doesn't have a contractual obligation, if there's no mandatory redemption, you have not to pay money in the future times. It's not mandatory. So there's no contractual obligation, and it will be cons uh, contractual obligation to make any payment, and it is classified as equity. And for such a uh, preference share, uh, the dividend fair will be charge to statement of changes and equity okay let's move on and uh, we will discuss some upsetting and that's is 32 when upsetting is allowed in is 32 so is 32 states that financial asset and financial liability financial asset and financial liability may only be upset in very limited circumstances mean in very rare circ uh, circumstances you can uh, upset the financial asset and financial liability and the net amount so mean the net amount you will report okay now what is the limited what is the limited circumstances when the upset is allowed so when the entity has legally enforceable rights mean there is some legally enforceable rights for upsetting the amount so you can do upsetting the second thing app it's uh, app the, there is an intention the intent either to settle on net basis when there's some intention to settle on net basis or to realize the asset and settle the liability simultaneously then okay and the, these two conditions you can do upsetting otherwise uh, you should uh, present uh, financial asset and financial liability separate okay let's say uh, here is a financial asset and its value is let's say hundred dollar okay and this financial liability value is let's say eight dollars so how you will upset this it will be twenty dollars you have upset this 80 with this uh, 80 so you will get the net amount which is twenty dollar you should report this amount okay uh, about disclosure so the gross and the net amount mean that 180 amount upset is required I mean disclosure of this amount upset is required by IFRS 7 as well as the information of the uh, information of right upset arrangement and similar uh, agreement also need to be disclosed mean that uh, why you upset is there any legally enforceable right to upset the amount or there is some intention either to settle on it with or less asset and Mm, set of the liability simply uh, let's uh, talk about the recognition and measurement of financial liability so first we will discuss financial liability after that we will discuss financial asset okay so how you recognize uh, financial liability okay initial recognition at initial recognition financial liability are measured at fair value 
so initially financial liability will be measured at fair value now if the financial liability will be had means subsequently if you have to measure this uh, financial liability at fair value to fractal loss then transaction cost should be expense okay while if you are not measuring the uh, you are not measuring the financial liability subsequently at uh, fair value of proper loss mean will not uh, will not be had at fair value of proper loss then transaction cost should be deducted from its carrying amount let's say <coughs> here we have financial liability okay and let's say this financial liability is the bank loan and its value is hundred dollar and here we have some transaction cost and the transaction cost value is twenty dollar okay now if the normally the bank loan subsequently merger at amortized cost okay so when you are measuring the um, bank loan at initial recognition then what what you will do? initially it will be recognized at fair value okay and the fair value is hundred dollar now uh, this bank loan will be measured at amortized cost, uh, cost mean will not be held at fair value through profit or loss so this transaction cost 100 will be deducted from this and you will have 80 dollar so this is will be the net amount and you will uh, use the opening liability for amortized cost now if in case in case you have taken this loan and you have invested this loan and asset and this asset, let me say this is the loan you have taken, this is the bank loan, and this bank loan you have to be in, uh, to invest in this asset. I mean, you have to purchase some asset uh, on this, and you have specifically taken the loan for this asset. Now, this asset, you have, um, let's say you have measured this at fair value to profit or loss. So, uh, IS32, uh, we will discuss this later, allow you to uh measure this loan also at fair value through profit or loss subsequently instead of amortized cost okay so when you have such a scenario okay such a scenario then how you will measure this uh, financial liability you will measure financial liability at fair value under and this transaction cost transaction cost which is i think uh, 20 dollars will be expense to profit or loss hope this is clear now <coughs> financial instrument <coughs> at fair value to profit or loss what does it mean it means that at each <coughs> at each balance sheet debt okay at each balance sheet debt the asset or liability as re-measured to fair value at any moment and the fair value is taken directly to income statement okay it means <coughs> that it at the reporting date you will re-measure the asset or liability to fair value let's say uh, the fair value is um, hundred dollar okay and now before you have the value um, 80 dollar so at the reporting date you will remeasure this value and you will uh, report this uh, you will upgrade you will uh, you know remeasure this amount to 100 and oh, there are some changes and this changes 20 dollar will be directly goes to profit or loss Okay, now uh, subsequent measurement. So subsequent, I told you before that initially financial liability are major, financial liability major at fair value. Now uh, there are two cases. Uh, you might, uh, you may measure this uh, uh, by amortized cost using my amortized method, amortized cost, or measure at fair value through profit or loss normally financial liability is subsequently measured at amortized cost okay 
but there are some rare cases you can also measure at fair value to profit or loss <coughs> so first we have to talk about amortized cost okay uh, most financial liability um, such as borrowing uh, or subsequently measured amortized cost using effective interest rate so mean you will use effective interest method for measuring the financial liability subsequently okay okay now here we have the amortized cost table this is the opening liability this is the finance cost this is the cash payment and this is the closing liability opening liability plus finance cost minus cash payment you will get closing liability this finance cost increase liability so we add with opening liability this cash payment will decrease liability so we deduct this from the opening liability mean from both of these and at the end we have closing liability okay now finance cost what you will do first this opening liability before i told you that if the fair the, the financial liability will be made at fair value and the transaction cost will be deducting from the fair value if the financial liability will not be held at fair value to profit or loss mean it will be held through amortized cost so here it will be held at amortized cost so here we will deduct this transition cost from the fair value of the financial liability and here we will have a net proceed amount so mean fair value minus transition cost issuing cost discount cost whatever is we will get a net proceed now you will multiply this net proceed with the effective interest rate which will be given in the question so when you apply uh, when you multiply net proceed with uh, effective interest rate then you will get a finance cost and this finance cost <coughs> will uh, debit finance cost credit liability so at increase liability increase in liability will be credit and increase in expense will be debit clear now you have to pay some case so you will use the nominal value nominal value means the gross amount you will be used so here we will use the net amount here we are using net amount but here we will use the gross amount so let's say this is the hundred dollar is the nominal value and this twenty dollar uh, is the um, transaction cost so we will get a net proceed of eighty dollar this eighty dollar will be used here okay but here we will use hundred dollar the nominal value and the coupon rate will be already given here let's say this is a five percent coupon rate so you will multiply with this amount this will not change throughout but this uh, effective interest finance cost will change okay because it will depend on this uh, closing uh, closing liability now let's move on and here we have a question so from this question you will be understand better if you see here uh, as a company some sh uh, issue some debenture okay issue redeemable debenture clear and this is the 20,000 and the value is hundred hundred dollar for value so you will first multiply it, this 20,000 with hundred dollars okay I will just take this uh, three common so we will 20 and we have 2000 so we will we will have this 2000 amount. this is the gross amount I mean this is the nominal value actual value anchoring issue cost so we have some uh, we have some uh, we anchor some issue cost okay and this is hundred thousand a dollar the debenture so we will also remove this three from here and we will just consider this three because we have already uh, removed the three uh, triple zero from here now the debenture are issue a dementia are redeemable means if when once uh, you know, the time finished then you will redeem the debenture and you have to pay some money so it's financial liability for you you know i told you before uh, if you need uh, if you issue the debenture mean that you are the borrower okay 
you will definitely pay at the and the, the person who invests in your bonds that will be the lender so for that uh, for the lender it will be financial as and for you it will be financial liability clear now when you have to uh, when you have to redeem the um, uh, debenture at four year time then you will have to pay premium five percent extra means that at the end you will pay this amount plus five percent of this amount twenty uh, twenty thousand okay after four year and carry a coupon rate so this is the coupon rate which you will be used for cash payment okay and the effective interest will be used this amount will be used for effective and this effective interest will be used for finance costs so what what the question says that calculate the amount to be shown a statement of financial position and a statement of profit or loss for each four years so in i have done this calculation for you guys because just to uh, save you time uh, so here you see this is the net proceed amount you know how this net proceed come we have this 20,000 and we have deduct 100 this is the transaction cost which, which, which you deduct from this you will get 1900 and the transaction cost is given here this 100 okay 100 dollar and so we have did uh, we just remove the three uh, triple zero and we just consider this 100 you may also write this no problem now effective interest, effective interest rate is given and that is uh, four fine four point five eight percent and when you multiply this four point five eight percent then you will get this and this will be debit to finance cost and credit liability so liability will increase by this amount so you will add this okay now this uh, coupon rate will be applied on the nominal value and the nominal value is 22,000 like 2,000 we have just removed the three not triple zero so when you apply this you will get this port. okay now this amount you have to pay so definitely this will decrease the liability and you will deduct from the net proceed and the finance cost so after when you are adding 1900 with 87 and deducting this 40 uh, 40 uh, 40 then you will get 1947 this amount will come here okay and again you will apply the same rate but this rate will not this will be the same because it will apply on nominal value which is not changing but here the opening liability is changing because some finance card cost is adding and some cash payment is deducted okay now at the end okay now after four year at the end of four, uh, the fourth year you will pay this cash payments mean um, which are the uh, which is based on the nominal value and 2000 which will be the nominal value plus there will be five percent premium which you have to pay so once you pay this amount you will have nothing no liability at the end okay i hope you 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 got this now we will discuss another question and this question is about loan issue at a discount rate okay again when you issue loan so it will be financial liability for you and the person or the entity invest and that loan means at uh, they'll take the loan and there's some uh, um, give some money to you lend some money uh, against this loan so that will be financial asset for them and for you it will be financial liability okay now financial liability is normally sub uh, normally uh, when we may subsequently then we may get it amortized cost okay but in, in some cases we measure it fairly to factor loss now the question say how will this be reported in the financial statement of james or the feeder to redemption so you have to redeem this thing at the future date on first jane 2001 james issue loan note when financial liability will uh, give rise uh, and then the nominal value is $50. It was issued at discount 
16% of nominal value. So means that at amortized cost method, Merton cost table, the opening liability will be the net amount of these two. Means you will deduct the 16% from this 50,000. The cost of issue, means here is also issue cost. <coughs> so you also deduct this amount. <coughs> okay, the interest of 5% of the nominal value is payable. So I mean you have to pay this amount. Okay, the effective interest rate is given 12% and you, you see here, the bond must be redeemed on 1st January 2006. Mean after 5 years, you will redeem the bond and you will have to pay some premium and the premium is 4611. Okay, so you will add uh, this 50,000 plus this amount you have to pay at the end uh, at the first chain 2006 okay let's do this question okay if you see here the opening uh, the opening liability is 40,000 and how I write you know this paper, from you this 40 come if, uh, before I told you the face value means the nominal value is 50,000 so there is some discount which you have to deduct and the discount you see if you 50,000 multiplied by 16% then you will have 8,000. This will be the here which I have written. Okay. And this will be a discount which you will deduct from this nominal value and this issue cost will also be deducted from here and the net proceed will be 50,000 and this net proceed I have written here. Okay. Now you will multiply this net proceed by 12 percent which is the effective interest rate and you will get this amount which is the finance cap and it, it increase the financial liability our uh, debit finance credit liability okay now uh, here we have some cash payment we, we, we will make some cash payment and the cash payment will be uh, from the nominal value multiplied with the coupon interest rate and the coupon rate is uh, five percent so the nominal value is fifty thousand and if you multiply this with the five percent then you will get this amount and this will not change because this will be based on the nominal value so that is why it's not changing and at the end you will get this closing liability mean net proceed plus opening liability effective interest rate mean this uh, opening liability uh, multi, uh, plus finance costs and deducting cash payment and you will get this amount this amount will come here okay and again you have to apply the same process and at the end at the year in mean at the end of uh, fifth year you will have to pay nominal value which is 50000 plus some premium which is 461 so you will get 454 uh, six one and at the end you will have no liability this is the end okay now let's say if the financial liability uh, uh, will not will will help be at fair with the fractal loss me subsequently so we will not use this table okay this is for amortization and we will not doing the same process that we did here okay we will just write uh, the transition cost these costs will be uh, expense to profit or loss okay so the total amount which is 27 27 triple one will be this will be finance cost if you add the effective interest total amount then you will get this amount you see here if you add all these these then you will get 2711 okay and for uh, cash payment and this that that's the cash payment which you have to pay and this is 25 multiplied by 5 you will get this amount okay now if there is no effective interest rate then how you will uh, then how you will cal uh, calculate the effective interest rate uh, then there will be a redeem value of the bond and there will be some purchase value of the bond okay so you will divide the redeem value of the bond by purchase value of the bond then you will get a value and this value you will search in this discount table 
and it's configured table so when let's say um, you you search and the value come like this one zero eight zero okay then you check in the table and you get here this eight percent let's say you check in the table and you got value like this I mean this value come like this for 49 then you again check in this table and if you see here here so your effective interest rate will be 12 percent okay doing like this <coughs> now <coughs> here we have a question and the question is purchases a bond <coughs> for this amount on 1st June 2001 and it will be redeemed on 31st December at this amount. So this is the redemption value and this is purchase value. So you will divide purchase value, uh, um, uh, you will divide the redeem value, divide, uh, divide by purchase value and you will get effective interest rate. And the bond is to be held at amortized cost and carry no coupon. So there is no cash payment. Calculate the variation of bonds means calculate the value of the bond finance at 31st uh, December 2001 and the finance income. You have to calculate the finance income here because you have purchased the bond, some investment in the fund. So this, is, this question is basically for the effect and how to calculate effect and trust. Uh, so what you will do? The, the thing is we sample. This is for one year. So you will divide uh, this uh, uh, redeem value and uh, purchase value for for one zero one and it will be like this so you will get a sum value and that <coughs> value will be equal to you check in the table then you will get this eight percent okay eight percent discount rate and you will multiply it You will multiply the purchase value with that eight percent, then you will get a finance income. And when you add the finance income with the uh, purchase value, then you will get the financial asset. Okay, which we have not uh, not discuss, but only we have discussed the definition. We will discuss this later. <coughs> but if you see here. If you have purchased bond means one person this is person a and this is person b this person issue bond okay and you purchase this mean you have some investment so that is financial asset for you fine and for this this will be financial liability and here we have done the question of financial asset but this i was just uh, mm, uh, want to give the flavor that how to calculate the effective interest rate okay now here is another question we have as some transaction that how we will calculate transaction you see here this H company no, this is H and raise finance uh, you this person want to raise finance on the first chain 2001 by issue of two year bond so this is the coupon rate okay with nominal and the nominal value is $10,000 now it was issued at a discount so you mean this this uh, 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 this bond will issue at five percent discount so what does it mean that mean that ten thousand ten thousand by five percent you have to calculate this value and you will deduct it from the number and redeemable at premium and this premium you will add 10,000 normal value plus this premium you will add and you will add uh, you will pay at the year end. So, okay this uh, the question says that this uh, issue cost can be ignored so issue cost you have to ignore there's no issue cost and the bar effective interest rate is 10 percent now the second question here we have uh, okay now let's first do this so illustrate and explain how these financial instruments should be accounted for each now if you see this age has financial liability and to be measured at amortized so financial liability normally measure at amortized cost subsequently the financial at fair value and after that at so financial liability initially recorded at fair value okay and the fair value will be the net proceed net proceed what does it mean that i told you before then when the financial liability will be measured at amortized cost subsequently 
then you will de deduct what you will deduct the issue cost the discount etc so when you deduct this amount 10,000 is the nominal value and when you deduct 5% from this then it will be a net proceed okay and this amount is then increased each year by the interest effect okay now this amount this is the let's say this is the opening liability and this will increase by the effect interest rate and reduce the actual repayment and the actual repayment will be reduced now i done this question for you guys if you see here uh, what we have here we have 10,000 10,000 dollars really, and here 5 percent is the discount so 5 percent of 10,000 is equal to 500 and you will get this amount this is the net proceed okay this is the net proceed now you multiply this net proceed with this effective interest which is 10 10 is the effective interest rate and you will get this it's a finance cost which increase the liability okay this coupon rate will apply on the nominal value mean 10,000 multiply by 20 to uh, make one uh, mean two percent then you will get this amount 200 uh, so nine five double zero less uh, nine five zero uh, plus nine plus and, and less two hundred and you will get this amount. Okay, this uh, and after two years you have to pay some. Um, I think that is uh, one seven five as the premium amount which you have to pay and ten thousand as the actual amount. No will and at the end you have nothing, no liability. So the transaction. Uh, was this transition about this transition we have discussed that this is a financial liability what why this financial liability because uh, the H is raised finance okay and the the H is raising finance so there's a bar there uh, he is a borrower and the person who invests or take the bond have lent money okay and definitely that will be the financial asset for that person and for H that will be financial liability so H how the H will calculate so the financial liability and fine and financial liability we initially measure at fair value you write this in a paper like this that we measure initially at this this is a financial liability and financial liability we measure at fair value to profit or loss uh, we measure initially at fair value and if we are uh, we will have the financial liability at fair value to profit or loss then transition cost will be expense and if the financial liability will uh, not help you at fair value to profit or loss then mean we measure at amortized cost subsequently so then we will deduct the uh, transition cost issue cost um, discount etc all these costed from here and we will get a net proceed and this net proceed will be the opening liability will be the opening liability uh, at, um, uh, at, at amortized cost table when we, when we, when we measure in this, uh, at a subsequent uh, when we subsequently measure okay so here is the case but it has no uh, there is no we are not uh, we will not held the financial liability at fair to factor loss so we measure at amortized cost and for that reason we have um, uh, use the net proceed amount at amortized cost table and the premium uh, which is the um, 500 will, will be uh, will be uh, paid at the year in and will be added to the uh, nominal value which is the 10,000 now we have the second uh, um, second transaction and this also we will discuss this there's a W raise uh, um, uh, finance uh, issuing by issuing 20 uh, 20,000 uh, $20 loan note and this is for four year and the coupon rate is 6% on 1st Jan 2001 the loan note were issued at a discount so here is again a discount so you will deduct this amount from uh, this amount and the coupon rate will be applied this for cash payment and redeem after four year at a free so this amount will be added at a free in effect your interest will, which was the finance cost create finance cost and issue cost over this amount so how you will calculate this first you will write uh, okay you write that is a financial liability and financial liability initially measured at fair value and if the financial liability will be held at fair value to property loss then you should uh, um, the transition cost will be um, expensive property loss and if 
the financial liability will not be adhered with the proper laws, then you will deduct. You will deduct the um, discount, uh, discount, and you will also deduct this issue cost. So here we will uh, subsequently we will merge at amortized cost, and we will deduct this amount from twenty thousand less this ten percent discount, and this uh, hundred uh, one thousand uh, issue cost. And you will get a net proceed okay now let's move on we have to check the calculation so here if you see here okay W has a financial liability to be measured at amortized cost normally we measure at amortized cost so the financial liability is initially regarded at fair value of the consideration with you the net proceed of issue net proceed of issue means that you have to deduct the amount like this is the nominal value and you have discount 10 percent this is 2000 and the transition cost issue cost this amount so the net proceed this will be the initial margin now the fair value of the received is transition cost is already now subsequently means subsequently when you subsequently measure it so you will subsequently subsequently you will measure at amortized cost clear and this will be the net proceed and this is 17,000 if you see here okay now you will apply the um, effective interest rate on the opening liability you will get this amount that will be finance cost <coughs> and credit liability mean increased liability <coughs> And this coupon rate will be applied on nominal value. And the nominal value were 20,000. Clear? Okay, you will add 17,000 plus uh, this finance cost and deduct this cash payment and you will get this liability, closing liability. This will be the opening liability for the second year and the second death doing the same or this and at the end you will pay 20,000 the nominal value plus some premium which is which is 1015 so it means <coughs> 21015 is the uh, total amount that you will have to pay and at the end the closing liability will be zero now let's move on to another question that is <coughs> C Kevin initially uh, raises finance by issuing zero mm -hmm. they issue some zero coupon bond mean there is no cash payment you must know that if there is zero coupon mean there is no cash payment at far on first chain 2005 with a nominal with this nominal <coughs> <coughs> the bond will be redeemed so mean it will be redeemed at uh, up to two years <coughs> the premium amount with this so mean you have to pay this ten thousand plus this one one four at the free at the at the year in uh, at the up to two years up to two years you will pay this amount and you will you will have not uh, you will have no liability at after uh, after second year now the issue cost can be grown so there is no issue cost if there is issue cost then you will deduct this and the effective interest rate is same the reporting date is in 31st january now it is still explain the same thing so if you see here this is the financial liability financial liability and this financial liability will be subsequently measured at amortized cost so when you are measuring at amortized cost then initially it will be measured at fair value less initially it will be measured at fair value of the concentration received and the concentration received will be uh, net proceed mean that uh, that will be the net proceed because you will deduct some discount and transaction whatever is cost and the opening balance mean the opening liability is increased each year by the effective interest mean when this net proceed opening liability 
you will multiply this with effective interest rate and that will be finance cost and which will increase let's say this is the 100 and let this is 10 so this will liability will be increased to 110 liability before liability was 100 and now the liability will increase to this because the finance cost increased liability okay and the liability is reduced by cash payment and so here if let's say this we you have to pay cash payment of five percent is a coupon but here we have no, not for any um, interest payment there's no coupon so we will not say like anything so we will pay zero and the closing liability will be one 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 ten so the opening uh, balance is increased each year the opening balance is increased each year uh, and the liability is reduced by cash payment the liability increased by cash payment and there is so mean here is no interest payment in this example so because it is zero rate bond so the coupon rate is zero if you see here this is the 10,000 is the net proceed okay and uh, uh, this is the uh, interest rate seven multiplied by this so 700 is the interest rate and here is no cash payment zero coupon rate so at the end we'll closing liability like this after uh, second year you have to pay the ten thousand and plus one four four nine so this is the premium amount which you have to pay as you see here in the question mm -hmm, here uh, here you see why we use this ten thousand uh, where is the question? Ah, here. Here, if you see, uh, C raise finance by issue zero coupon, so mean there is no cash payment and means that liability is not decreasing. Okay? Uh, and there is, if you see here, we, we don't have any issue cost, so the net proceed is this amount no issue cost no transition cost so we use this as opening liability hope this is clear now okay let's move on we have uh, okay we done with this financial now I just let me give some flavor up the date we will discuss the fair rate of profit or loss okay what is out of money means okay out of money out of money means it's not attractive means uh, it's not attractive for you uh, what does it mean it means that option that will not produce a profit if it is exercise so mean if you purchase uh, uh, let's say uh, I have given the example before uh, let's say you purchase a call option that you will purchase uh, some underlying security at five dollar now when the time come and that uh, same security is starting at three dollar so would you go for exercise at five or you will just uh, uh, go to the market and it's the market price market price okay so when when the option is here if you see this option is not profitable for you because if you exercise at five then you lost two dollar because at the market the price is three dollar clear I hope this is clear so out of money means that option that is uh, uh, not produce profit if it is exercise okay first uh, let me explain you that what is strike price strike price is a set price at which the derivative contract can be bought sold when it is exercised so mean the price at which uh, it so let this is the five dollar is the strike price at which the option can be bought or sold okay so for call option the strike price is uh, is where the security can be bought okay mean we already discussed that call option mean that you have to bought, buy something a uh, security while the um, uh, put option mean that you have to sell the security clear so here we have an example to clear this more uh, mr. a buy call option with a strike price is this mean this is the exercise price you have to purchase something uh, underlying security I mean this is a option so you have to un purchase the underlying uh, underlying security at five dollars so this is the exercise price 
This give Mr. A right to buy a stock at five dollar on or before a specified date and in currently trading at three dollar. Now the same security is trading at three dollar. So the option is out of money. Mean the option is not profitable for you, is not attractive for you to exercise. So no profit at the exercise the option. If you exercise at this price, then it will be not. So this option is not attractive for you. It's out of money option. Okay. In the same cases, if if Mr. A has a put option, mean uh, they have to sell uh, some security. And strike price is two dollar. Means exercise price is that this two dollar, and the same security is trading at three dollar. So definitely, if you if you sell the thing at two dollar, and it's trading at the market at uh, three dollar, so you will lost one dollar. It's not attractive option for you to exercise. Okay. Uh, and Mr. A will not sell this stock for two dollar uh, as his option contracts there that he can win, he can sell it for more in the market. So the market is good price. When option is out of money, it simply means that if you exercise the option right now, you will be out of money. On the other hand, you will lose, uh, lose money on the transaction. Here is a, just a picture for uh, your understanding so stock price is five okay and now you have this uh, uh, you have let's say call, cost uh, call up option and there's option uh, price is strike price five and the market price is three dollar so you will definitely you lost two dollar so you're out of money of three dollar and you will not exercise okay now why I have mentioned these uh, uh, out of money uh, concept before I have to start this the second part the subsequent merger and second part of the financial liability so let me remind you financial liability will be merger initially at fair value now if the financial liability will be held at fair value to profit or loss then you will major uh, the transition cost will be the transaction cost will be expensed to profit or loss if this will not merger it will not held mean it will be major at major at amortized cost then transition cost will be deducted from the fair value <clears throat> now we 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 done this thing amortized cost now we will do this thing fair <clears throat> will fair way to fractal law <clears throat> so out of money derivative mean non attractive derivative and liabilities held for trading are measured at fair value through profit or loss. So when there is out of money derivative or liabilities that are held for trading will be measured at fair value to profit or loss. This is the first case. The second thing, second thing is then when you will measure the liability at fair value to profit and loss. So IFRS says then the FRS says that uh, when you will also measure financial liability at fair value to profit or loss. I mean, normally we measure subse uh, on subsequent measurement, we normally measure at uh, amortized cost. But FRS said that there is some situation in which you can also uh, you can also avail option to measure the uh, financial liability at fair value. And the case is when when you when uh, when you will measure the financial liability at fair value instead of amortized cost when it uh, eliminate or reduce the accounting mismatch means that uh, you will measure the financial liability subsequently at uh, fair value to fraud and loss when it reduce or eliminate accounting mismatch what does it mean okay i have here example for you guys <coughs> So at the amount received from loan, so if let's say we have to receive a um, loan, okay, and from this loan, I mean this, from this amount, uh, this amount we will use for asset, okay, we'll purchase some asset, and that asset is measured at fair value. So normally the loan will be measured at amortized cost. But if we measure a loan at amortized cost and uh, the asset uh, which we'll purchase on this amount uh, measure at fair value, so there will be some accounting mismatch. 
So to eliminate the mismatch, uh, the IFRS say that you can also measure this loan at fair value. So both will be measured at fair value and there will be no accounting mismatch. Clear? <coughs> IFRS say that any amount <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> IFRS, uh, IFRS 9 says that any amount at any, any moment and fair value is split into two components. Okay, at this some moment, then you will split this moment into come mean there is changes in fair value. If <coughs> this pair and this fair value change is due to credit on credit risk, then you will uh, present that amount and uh, other comprehensive income mean that on credit risk means that the risk that the entity which has issued the financial liability will be unable to repay or discharge it the second component is if the fair value change is due to market interest rate then you will present this amount to profit or loss so there are two cases if the fair value moment is uh, because of on credit risk then you will record that amount to OCI. If the credit, uh, the fair value moment is because of the market interest rate, because of the market interest rate, then you will that change you record to profit or loss. Okay. Okay, guys. Now we have here that how we will calculate fair value of financial liability okay so when whenever you calculating the um, fair value of financial liability financial liability so by computing the present value of the future cash flow using the sum of two rates the first one is credit market interest rate and the second one is credit worthiness so mean you will when you calculate him the present value of the future cash flow then you will add up these to uh, rate and you will have uh, sum of these rate and you will uh, use the discount factor and you calculate the present value of the um, financial uh, liability now here if you see debt here's the debt how you will calculate the fair value financial liability so here's a debt cash flow and discount packed rate which will be the sum of the two rates and is a present value and uh, adding these uh, values you will have the fair value of the financial liability okay now here we have example let us discuss this thing discuss the accounting treatment accounting treatment of the liability at the 31st Discuss the accounting treatment of the liability at 31st uh, December 2001. Okay, on 1st uh, Jan 2001, an issue financial liability for its nominal value 10 million. Interest payable is this amount is a cash payment which you have to pay, and the liability is repayable uh, on 1st uh, 2003. I mean, these are 2001, 23. So M trade financial liability and short term. Okay, normally F here we uh, he, here we have uh, clearly mentioned uh, <coughs> in the question that the financial liability is trading and short term. So we will subsequently measure at fair value through profit or loss. At the start, at the beginning, I told you there's out of money derivative and financial liability, which is held for trading when you will measure at fair value. If this line, if this statement, uh, if let's say this statement is absent here and is not given here, then you will measure at amortized cost, right? But here is a statement, and this statement clearly says that this should be measured at fair value to profit or loss okay <coughs> now on 31st december market interest rate have let's say the market rate market interest rate move on uh, goes up uh, to 10 percent 
so <coughs> how you will treat this the financial liability is traded uh, uh, traded in short term so I mean this is trading in short term so definitely this is a uh, will be measured at fair value to profit or loss okay if it's not traded for in short term then you will not measure at fair value to profit or loss clear now the liability must be re-measured to fair value at the reporting date so the liability will be re-measured at reporting date at the reporting date <coughs> i told you before that what does it mean that fair value to profit or loss it means that at the reporting date the fair will be remerged to fair value and the changes will go to the profit or loss now on the on 31st december 2002 i mean this is the year end and 31st uh, december 2000 this is the second year in uh, the cash flow is five percent mean uh, you have to pay mm, this is the interest payment and at the end the total amount okay mean interest plus <coughs> this is redemption repayable liability is repayable okay so uh the discount rate is 10 percent you can calculate this uh, from the discount factor tables and and how you will calculate this you see here one And like this, I can square this. Square like this. So by this formula, you will calculate this amount, and when you multiply 0 0.5 with this amount, you will get this amount. And 10.5 multiplied by 0 0.83, you will get this. And at the end, the total liability will be 9.13. Okay. So the fair value of the liability at the year end is uh, this 9.13 million okay now the following adjustment is required liability has decreased so it will be debit by this one. Okay, so you debit liability by this one.